everyone! I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and today we're here with a dyeing experiment. Today we are going to see if we can dye some yarn with some alcohol based inks. Right here we have pre-soaked some Knit Picks Cotton Bouquet which is 100% cotton, some Wool of the Andes Worsted which is 100% wool, and some Stroll Fingering Weight Yarn which is 75% Superwash Merino, 25% Nylon. Today's video is sponsored by Lene. If you would like to learn more about how you as a viewer can sponsor an episode of Dye Cut Weekly, you can find a listing with all the details in the Kindness Creations Etsy shop. I'll have a link both in the video description and in the top right hand corner. We're going to go on a field trip today and do this outside, mainly because these alcohol inks are flammable. And yeah, there's even warnings that the vapors from these inks can cause like flash flames. And I figure better to be safe than sorry. Okay, we are outside where we have a lot of ventilation. If I weren't planning on doing other projects with the stove today, I would set this up low immersion, bring in some heat, and then turn off all the flames, and then I would be okay doing this on my stovetop. But I wouldn't want to do any cooking for a period of time after that to just give time for everything to evaporate and disperse. And so instead, I have the pre-soaked yarn here, we're going to add some of these inks and then pour on some boiling water and see what happens. And so that'll be our way to introduce heat into the system. Okay, so this is a three color pack. Um, and the three colors we have are Flamingo, Patina, and then I'm not sure what this purple is called. The purple is called Amethyst. So these inks are supposed to be used for things that are non-porous, but it does say it can be used for things like cardstock. And yeah, if it can be used on cardstock, I mean, granted, then it dries, but it does say it's a dye-based ink. So we'll see if it does anything. And Lene, if it doesn't work well on the cotton, then I have a backup planned. <laughs> But yeah, let's open up. I don't know if there's going to be anything. No, it looks like we're ready to go. And I'm just going to dot these inks onto the yarn. I mean, I definitely smell it. Uh, I absolutely smell it. And I'm just adding some drops. I'm not even really counting. I have no idea if this is going to stain my stainless steel tub, but all right, there is our purple. I mean, I think that this color palette is going to be really, really pretty. Um, this is the more turquoise. Trying to get some nice spread, but I thought about adding the color once I had added the warm water in here but I decided to switch it up. There's no acid in the yarn, so we might end up deciding to come in and add some vinegar. I know the vinegar isn't something that would necessarily help the cotton, but I just sort of want to see what will happen. Um, if it'll set, how much color might rinse out. I do plan after I add the hot water to come in with some foil uh, to cover this, but, oh, that was a lot there. I, I fully expect that this will spread, but I also expect that it will probably stain. I mean, I would imagine it would stain, but this is why we are doing this test. This is one of those tests that might have been prudent to start oops, on some mini skeins instead of going straight to full skeins of yarn, but you know what? It's been a while since I've done one of these just like let's throw things at something and see what sticks kind of experiments and I've had these for a while and so I'm curious. I have actually never used these in any capacity but the reason why I think that there's a chance that it could work um, and this pink color is really pretty. Um, the reason why I think it could work is that the highlighter ink worked and Sharpies, which I haven't done, but Sharpies work. I have seen washable markers 
heat set stain garments before. So that is something else uh, that is worth consideration. And so maybe these are going to work something like highlighters. And that would be really, really cool. Um, this flamingo color is practically glowing. And I will say I am definitely smelling the fumes. <laughs> but we are working outside. We are in a very well ventilated area. And goodness, you know, I debated about this and I'm still waiting for that water to heat up, I do think I want to flip and add color to the other side um, just to get a little more color distribution in here. Um, that way we have a better shot at some more even color coverage, uh, even if it might cause some spread. There we go. Try not to, and actually I did not get much on my fingers, which I don't know. It's surprising, but we have a lot of this. I am anticipating. Let's see. Let's make predictions. Go in the comments and leave some predictions below. Do you think we're going to see felting um, from the washing step on our wool? Do you think that this is going to work? Uh, what other questions? Do you think this will work? Do you think that the colors will all combine into something muddy. Uh, yeah, I, I look forward to hearing what you guys think might come from this. Uh, I've not even used like half of them. But okay, I am now going to speed things up and dot the rest of the yarn like I did on the other side. While I was trying to squeeze the inks onto the yarn, it was getting a little more difficult. And so I tried shaking the bottle and that worked a lot easier. Yes, it gave more of a stream than a drop of the color, but given that we're about to add water onto this anyway, I think we're okay. Okay, the timing was perfect. I literally went back inside and my tea kettle had just started screaming. So here I am. And I guess I'm going to start at either end, just pouring this hot water on to our yarn. And I will go and sort of steam up a second kettle, um, but I do want to get some tin foil to put on top of this. Okay, temperature wise, I think that we're probably in the lowish 50s. And I'm not going to steal completely, this is just about keeping some heat in. Unfortunately, we're on top of my metal table, and so air can come up beneath it, and that'll also work on cooling it, but it is nice and warm, so we should have heat trapped for a while. There was some spread in the colors, but honestly, like, I expected that it might just quickly spread, and it didn't. Like, there's some areas, like on the wool, it spread more, but I still see some of those splotches. It is absolutely uneven though, so um, I think I'm gonna go set up another full kettle of hot water and then we'll come back and add that. And if I didn't say, it's probably around 50 degrees outside. I'm out here without a coat and I'm comfortable in a short sleeve shirt, but it is not like warm, if that makes sense. Yeah, I was wrong. It's 42 degrees outside, but you know, again, I'm out here, I'm comfortable working like this. So, <laughs> but yeah, I think that the temperature is an important note since we are outside. Uh, another note is that the pan and everything that I'm using to wash and take care of the yarn is dedicated for dye and is not used for food. If you would like to learn more about the yarn bases or any of the other tools and equipment that I use in my videos, I have links to some of the items I use the most in the video description, including a link to my website Site where I go into more detail about my favorite like tools and equipment for dyeing yarn at home. If you're curious why I am being so conservative, this looks cool, it is that uh, like you, you cook with alcohol based stuff all the time probably, but what you don't do is cook with something that is this high in alcohol content on the stove. And so I take warnings seriously, especially when I am filming videos. <laughs> but oh yeah, the pan is still nice and hot. 
I kind of want, you know what? I want to press it. I am not going to. It looks like fully submerged. We could have some cool splotches. Like this is looking really, really cool. And I mean, the water is looking purpley over here and I do see some stains. I wonder if I'm permanently staining this pan, but we will cover things back up. It's not like a perfect seal, but I didn't check. It's still very hot. And so I think I'm going to leave this for, gosh, let's leave it for 20 minutes and then maybe I'll come and add some vinegar. I'm a little worried about adding the vinegar with the cotton, but I mean, it shouldn't hurt. I don't think so. Yeah, we'll, we'll, I'll set a timer for 20 minutes and then we'll come back. It is now a whopping 43 degrees outside. Not bad for March. Oh man, although two years ago we were preparing for a snowstorm today, so yeah, let's see. It's still steamy, still definitely warm, and I can't tell if it's color in the water or staining, or both. Uh, this might definitely be stained, but let's go get some vinegar. I'm very excited if this worked. One, two, three and a half tablespoons. Notice I put it mostly on the wool. I'm gonna go grab my gloves though. Okay, I'm gonna grab this and it's now sat for a while and I'm curious. If I push, do I see spread? Where do I see set? I think a combination. Interesting. Is that gonna it might come off. Oh that's that's a good that's a good sign. That is a good sign. Let's look down here. Sorry for the sounds. Yeah, unclear if that's gonna come off. Um, but you can see, this is interesting. The wools are sort of taking that purple hint of color. The cotton isn't. So our water is now vinegar-ish. I think that my plan might be to let things cool off. It still smells like alcohol. I might let it cool off. And then I'm tempted to maybe even add more color to Lene's cotton. Um, but I want to get the wool out. You know what I think I'll do? This is what I'll do. I'm going to let this cool completely. Maybe we'll even let it sit overnight. Um, and just let it sit. and going to trap that heat in. Okay, and then we'll wash it and we'll see what happens. If the color stays in the yarn when I wash it, um, especially the cotton, then I'll come and do this again, maybe without the vinegar, but I'll come and add more color to the cotton yarn and leave the wool ones as they are. That way the cotton can have a little more punch and vibrancy to it. So that is my plan. It's possible everything might wash out with soap, but we will see. <laughs> That is why these are dyeing experiments. You never quite know, but sometimes, especially with clearances or when you have materials on hand, it's worth knowing if they work, right? I came out maybe an hour later or so to check, and okay, the water is cool. Um, we have cooled off. I am curious. I can't tell. No, there's definitely color in the water. Um, it seems like there's not a ton of spread in, oh, okay, there's still some warmth over here, this area that blew off, it's cool at that end. Um, yeah, there's definitely still some color in here, so I'm going to continue with my, just sort of leave it out here for a long time, but this time I've secured the foil on a little more securely. Uh, again... I'm not really sure what's going to happen, but 
probably this evening once the kids go to bed so not a huge defined amount of time but at least it'll have been in here at least eight hours even once it is cooled um, then I think we'll try to wash it versus waiting until tomorrow that's the current plan <laughs> I did end up waiting until the next morning. And you can see we still have a lot of dots. Now, one thing I do wanna point out is the color differential, which is the most apparent here in the purple section. Uh, we've got like a more pink purple, a more blue purple, and then something that's a lot more pastel on the cotton. This is our non-superwash wool, this is our superwash. I think it's possible that purple will wash out, but let's go and start washing. I'm actually going to start with the cotton. I'm curious if this is a stain or how much bleeding we might see. I'm only really wearing the gloves because I'm a bit concerned about staining, but I mean the amount of bleeding it's fairly minimal right now. I'm going to add some dish soap to see if that will cause some more color to come out. I mean, I'm seeing a little bit of bleeding from that purple color, which I'm not surprised about because we saw like purple water left in our dye pot. But I think these colors might be pretty well set. So, hmm. Hmm. I definitely would want more coverage on the cotton. I think that this works. Um, I think my plan is to rinse out the soap and then if it weren't raining today, we are seeing some more bleeding. Hmm. Uh, if it weren't raining today, I would go ahead and go outside and add more color right now. But alas, it is raining and so I think that I will rinse out the soap put the yarn through the spin dryer, hang it up to dry, and then we'll come back and do another round of pre-soaking and dyeing of the cotton yarn. And the thing that this will allow us to do also is, and I'm using warm water, which I don't always do for washing, but I wanted to because I wanted to see like how much bleeding we'll see, which is honestly not a lot. Um, but by coming back and doing another round of dyeing and another round of soaking, we'll see if we see more bleeding during that pre-soak. So that'll be good. I'm bringing all of the wool yarn over together. This is still warmish water and I'm not seeing ink transfer onto my gloves. And I am seeing some amount of bleeding. But again, that is the color that our water is. So at first, it doesn't necessarily mean that the color is coming out. Even outside, and here I'm adding some soap, even outside with our cool temperatures, there was heat for a prolonged period of time. Um, and one thing you could definitely do is heat for longer and like steam for a while, but I'm curious how long it'll take for the bleeding to stop. But the color, especially with that spread from the purple, is really, really pretty. And again, here's the color that we had in our basin. The staining in here is fairly minimal, um, but hopefully it'll come out. I'll just add some water to this while we wait. Wow, that is a lot clearer already. This isn't bad. Not bad at all. Okay, I'll keep washing this and then put this through the spin dryer and we'll hang everything up to dry. One other thing I do want to point out, however, is that we did not overload this with dye. If I had used a lot more dye, we would probably have a lot more washing. 
I had a lot of restraint with the dye application here today and I think that that is definitely going to play a part in our ease with rinsing this out. But next we'll come back and look at the dry yarn from this first attempt and then we'll go and dye and maybe not just the cotton, maybe we'll dye everything a little more. Here is all the yarn we dyed with alcohol-based inks. And you guys, it worked. Uh, this one's a little off center. Now, the cotton had the color strike and then it didn't really absorb a lot of the wash off. You can see, especially with the purple, what our stroll, so our superwash merino nylon, and our non-superwash wool here absorbed. And so these are beautiful on their own. Now, I do have a few questions. Uh, I did add vinegar at some point, so maybe that prevented the cotton from absorbing more color. Or maybe the inks just struck that cotton that much faster, and so therefore there wasn't a lot of spread. Either way, it's clear that whatever was spreading wasn't really striking on the cotton because these were all together next to each other. So is it like the wool was soaking it up faster? I'm not sure. The teal is definitely the most subtle of the three colors. You can see it's hard compared to the wools, but you can see a tiny bit of a pink yellow, a tiny bit of a purple. I do want to go and add more dye onto this cotton. Um, and in this second round of dyeing, we can then see if we're gonna get more spread or maybe we'll see more of the same thing. But now that we know that the technique works and that it stays in the yarn with washing, I want to go expand and intensify this colorway for our sponsor, Lene. So I'm off to go pre-soak our cotton yarn one more time since we're completely dry now. I considered adding more color to our wool blends, but I think that I might just leave it here for them. We'll come back and I'll show you guys the dyeing and what the fi finished cotton looks like, and we'll compare it to these one last time. But these are beautiful on their own and have a fairly good punch of color that goes all the way through the skein, so that we've got some good balance. On a sunny and slightly warmer day, we set up outside to add more ink to the cotton yarn. I do want to point out that we did see some color bleeding uh, in the pre-soak. I pre-soaked the yarn overnight so it'd be nice and saturated. And then this time with more space, I made sure that we got some more coverage. I didn't want to go overboard and add way too much color, but I wanted to have more color so that way this yarn would feel more balanced and there wouldn't be any large sections of white throughout it. Then I went and got some boiling water and covered the yarn with that hot water to allow this color to set. I'm not 100% sure if that heat is really necessary, but that's what worked before. The only difference from the previous round is that I'm not adding vinegar. The cotton doesn't need vinegar. As I added on the colors, you probably will notice that the hues are a bit different between the color that stuck behind and the fresh color that we add on. Um, for example, the flamingo color looks a lot more red when it's wet and then it sort of ended up being this more hot pink, um, which I think is just cool and fun to see. I did flip the yarn over and add dye to the other side before I added our boiling hot water. I did a combination of drops, but then specific placement, sort of touching the tip of the ink to the damp yarn itself. There was definitely a fair amount of color spread once I poured on the hot water, but I'm curious how the colors will set, and I covered everything up with tin foil. My piece of tin foil may not have been quite big enough, but I made do with what I had created. I let the dye sit overnight and it actually started raining, so I'm now going to remove the tin foil. But something occurred to me about the spread of color and what we saw on our wool yarn, but not the cup. When I added the hot water, I saw the color spread, and you can see that this looks a lot more similar to those wool yarns we created. I think the big difference here is that I didn't add vinegar. It's possible that when I added vinegar shortly after adding the water, that when the color spread, it couldn't strike the cotton. Now, it might all wash out. There is dye left in here, and we're gonna go wash it. 
So we'll see, but I hypothesize right now that some more of this wash of color is going to remain on the cotton yarn. I've got warmish water here in my basin. I'm going to squeeze out as much as I can um, over our, where our dye bath was. And a lot of the color did, that purple did come out, but I am seeing more of that pastel wash of color in here. The color is still subtle, but it is fun and pretty. Uh, and again, I'm washing in warm. There was going to be some bleeding for a bit, just because, I mean, I think there, there is. But what I haven't noticed is these dark colors get less vibrant. The speckles get less vibrant with time. I am going to add some dish soap again, and I'm going to make the water a little less warm. So I'm expecting we'll still see some bleeding for a few number of washes and rinses. And yeah, maybe we're gonna lose a bit of that pastel wash. Maybe it needs to be concentrated to bind. Who knows? But the color is sticking in here and I think that, that is really, really awesome. So I'm gonna wash this a number of times to try to get bleeding to stop to the best of my ability. And then we'll come back and look at all of the finished dry yarn. And one more note about bleeding. Uh, if I were to dye yarn with fiber reactive dyes or tie dye, even after washing it to clear, it might still bleed on the next wash. Uh, it is part of the nature of these dyes. I know with tie dye t-shirts myself, I like to wash them on their own a handful of times before throwing them in the breath with the rest of the wash. But this amount of bleeding, and it's even less now than it was when we first put it in, it is fairly light. So that is at least a good thing. But it's possible that we would see a lot more bleeding if I use a lot more of the dye. Just a handful of washes later, we're still in warm water. It's actually been sitting in here for a bit. I just want to show you that our water is clear. So it is possible, and the pigment in the in the yarn is actually fairly pale. Um, it's still that pale wash. Uh, so it wasn't as much of a brightness. So I'm not sure about my vinegar hypothesis, but I'm gonna put this through the spin dryer and hang it up to dry. Here is the finished cotton color wise. Even after adding all that additional color, it is still fairly pastel and subtle. I will say we have more of a lavender and a pale pink, and maybe, mm, it's almost maybe a pale bluish it feels, but I guess it could be green on those areas more so than we did before. But the intensity and hues of that background spread are quite different from our wool-based yarns. Specifically, the flamingo pink color. Uh, it is definitely more of a fluorescent pink on the cotton, and it looks more of an orange coral color on the wool. Ultimately, I am really, really excited to have a technique that worked so well on both wool and cotton. This is not usually something that I see when I'm playing with a new pigment dye that might not work <laughs> on yarn. Lene, thank you so much for sponsoring this episode of Dye Putt Weekly. I hope that you're gonna be really, really excited with how this cotton yarn turned out. As for why I decided to try to dye yarn with alcohol inks, the container, the packaging clearly said that these are dyes and therefore I thought that there was a chance it could work. Things like pigments, like for example a soap-based pigment, might not work in the same way depending on like the solubility. It, it just might not be able to react and to bind to other fibers. But if you're doing something like soap, it could suspend pretty evenly within the soap giving you that color. So there's never any harm in trying something, but you're more likely to see a success with something that does indicate it's some kind of dye than if it's marked as just a pigment. But again, you never know until you try. So what unconventional things should I give a shot? I know on my list already are all kinds of hair dyes and henna and some things like that. I do have, I think in my stash, a few other 
different types of dye that I haven't tried before, but I'm open to exploring things. So make sure you let me know down in the comments what else I should add to my list. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and I really hope that you enjoyed this video. I am really excited with how this turned out. I'm not sure if I would go out of my way and buy alcohol-based inks, but if you had them around, it could be really fun to play with. Make sure that you're subscribed and you have your notifications turned on so you never miss a new video. I release new content every Tuesday and Friday morning. But we also have other things that pop up along the way and you really don't want to miss a thing. Thank you so much for watching everyone.